In this procedure, what we're going to do is look at the Shapiro Wilt test. So the Shapiro Wilt test is a test of normality. Okay. Now there's a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis is that the essentially what we're doing here is we're drawing a sample from the some distribution. Okay. And because this is statistical inference, what we're doing here is we are making some sort of inference around a, the sam uh, the population that it's drawn from. So really what we're doing here is, I mean, the, the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis can be phrased a couple of different ways. I just like this one particularly myself, that the sample is drawn from a normally distributed population, okay? So essentially what we're saying there is, key, the key thing there is that we're saying that the population is normally, normally distributed. The counterclaim is the alternative hypothesis is that the, data, the population is not normally normally distributed okay so that's the key thing so it's normal the population is d d uh, normally distributed uh, or it's not normally normally distributed now something to keep in mind here actually is that usually when you're writing the null hypothesis you sort of state a, like the absence or negation or something is not something usually write that in the uh, null hypothesis but usually when um, this is a sort of I think this is a, I consider this a sort of very special case that here whoops here the null hypothesis is you know is making some sort of positive there's a sort of p positive quality to um, the null hypothesis so but just to sort of anyway just to sort of reiterate that the um, Null hypothesis is that normally distributed, uh, the data, the population is normally normally distributed. Anyway, that's enough of that. So essentially, what we're going to do here is we will have either a p-value or significance value. Okay, so in SPSS is called a significance value, and what we're going to do is uh, compare it to some predefined threshold. I'm sorry, apologies for that extra R there. Okay, threshold. So what we're going to do here is I am going to use a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. Really, that's just the sort of default in undergraduate statistics. Okay, so uh, this is a one-tail test. The Shapiro-Wolf test is a one-tail test. Okay, so what we're going to do here is compare our uh, p-values to uh, uh, from the test to 0 0.05. Okay, so just for argument's sake, what is this rule here? And uh, what is this threshold? If it's a two-tail test, we divide alpha over two. So we would compare it to 0 0.025 for if we were doing some sort of two-tail test. Okay. So anyway, if the p-value, let's just scroll in there. If the p-value is less than the threshold, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So for argument's sake, if we get a p-value of 0.0125, in this case, what we do is we reject the null hypothesis. And we would sort of say, we have enough evidence to say that the population is not normally distributed. Okay, so really, just actually, just remember that hypothesis testing really is more about evidence. It's not really about what is true or false. It's do you have enough evidence to say this? That's what hypothesis testing. It's a better way of looking at it. Put it that way. Um, if the p-value is greater than the threshold, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That is to say, we don't have enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed. It's quite an interesting way to look at the um, the what, how to actually interpret this test. Um, you know, it's for a very simplistic point of view, you're sort of saying data is normally distributed, yes or no. This is a bit more nuanced approach. Now, that's sort of a simplistic approach. We'll sort of... It's not great, but it's it's not it's not completely wrong. It's just not it's very simplistic, and it's probably be a bit too simplistic. So the way I have it sort of spelled out here, it's probably a better way of looking at it. Okay, so we have enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed, or we don't have enough evidence to say that the data set is not not normally distributed. Because really, it's a test against normality. These are tests against normality. You're trying to show that they're not normally distributed, essentially. Now, just as a remark, uh, stuff like type 1 and type 2 error just applies to this test like any other hypothesis test. So, so again, just sort of be mindful of that when you're interpreting it. Okay. So, let's have a look at a few examples here. This is from a statistical software package called R. Okay. Now, really, uh, it's... You, you can do this sort of very. It's very similar with SPSS and other stuff like that. So, essentially, all you have to do is be able to pick out your p-value. There it is. Okay. Is that less than? Oops, not point not five. 
No. So we fail to reject null. Okay. It's not. Okay. So fail to reject null. Essentially, the crude interpretation is yeah, we're fine to go with the sort of work on the basis that this is a normally distributed population. Okay. As far as this test is concerned, we are 95% confidence. Okay, here again is p value less than 0.05. No, same interpretation as last time. Okay, um, no, it's not normally distributed. Or sorry, this in this case we could sort of say we reject the null. Sorry, you fail to reject the null. And in this case, what we think here is that there's not enough evidence to say that there is this data set is not normally distributed. Now, the, the high, very, the very high p-value there is very reassuring. Okay. In the last case, it wasn't so high, so you might think, and mm, you know, can you sort of uh, back this up with other looking at other sort of types of plots or something like that? Oh, here now, look at this. Not point, not 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 one. 097 definitely is p value less than 0 0.05 yes reject null definitely not normal well is that definitely not normal but we're pretty sure it's not normal okay so that's the shapiro wilk test now that's really just how to, to interpret output, okay? Uh, this is not an R class, but essentially it's pretty simple. The data set is called Y3, and you use this function there, Shapiro.test, and this gives you the output. Now, that, so it's straightforward enough. So if you know how to interpret the output, uh, and particularly that p-value, you're home and dry. Uh, just as a remark, there's a couple of other things given here, but I don't really sort of focus on them so much. For example, here we have the test statistic, but, you know, what do you do? Essentially, the test statistic really is just to generate the p-value, so, you know, if you're doing a PhD in statistics, maybe it's of interest, but otherwise, probably not. Okay, that's it, the Shapiro-Wilk test.